Germany. It's the final edition of World Championship Boxing for calendar year 2008. Tonight, a doubleheader featuring heavyweight Vladimir Klitschko, recognized by almost all ring observers as the kingpin of the division, taking on Hasim Rahman, a former champion. And then we take him back to Las Vegas for a replay of last Saturday night's stunning welterweight mega bout between boxing's biggest attraction, Oscar De La Hoya, and pound-for-pound -pound king, Manny Pacquiao. A relatively quiet crowd inside this SAP arena in Mannheim, holding their energy for the darling of German television and German boxing crowds, Vladimir Klitschko. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Lampley. We're here once again to watch as Vladimir Klitschko tries to take another step toward control of public opinion about the heavyweight division. Once again, he'll be doing it before the watchful eye of the last man to truly galvanize the heavyweight division and to be universally seen as the champion, Lennox Lewis. And Lennox joins us now. He just learned within the past week that he's to be enshrined this upcoming year in the International Boxing Hall of Fame in Canastota, New York, along with our colleague Larry Merchant. Congratulations on that, Lennox. Um, Hasim Rahman gets a chance tonight against Vladimir Klitschko to a certain degree. Rock is still living on what he did against you seven years ago in South Africa with a right hand shot in the dark that made him heavyweight champion for seven months. How much chance that he could reproduce that kind of magic against Vladimir tonight? Well, I think it's a fat chance, but you have to look at Asim Rockman. He's a tough guy. He's not the type of opponent to come here to lay down. He's going to give you a little bit of problems. He's got a good job. He's not an easy guy to knock out. So. But whether he can come through with a great, big, spectacular shot like the one he hit me with is going to be slim. And, you know, the fact that he took a little time to uh, prepare for this fight, he just had a, a, a quick training camp, whether he's in good shape or not, this is going to be the question. So I'd like to see if he's in good shape. If he's in good shape, he's going to give him some problems. There have been questions about Rockman's preparation for this fight. He was brought in as an opponent when Alexander Povietkin, originally scheduled to fight Vladimir Klitschko, wound up with a broken foot. As for Vladimir, uh, he continues, Max Kellerman, this drive for legitimacy within the heavyweight division. Where does this match up with Rockman figure into that? Well, there's only one matchup. There's only one opponent against whom Vladimir Klitschko can establish his absolute legitimacy as the heavyweight champion of the world, uh, that would that opponent would be Vitaly Klitschko, his big brother, and for obvious reasons, that fight doesn't seem likely to happen. It, really what we're left with here, which I think is a kind of an interesting story for boxing, is a two-headed heavyweight champion. So comparisons between the two brothers will inevitably come down to how each fares against his own opponent. And while Vladimir is generally perceived as number one in the division, it's big brother Vitaly who engages in the dramatic fights, the exciting fights with the dramatic endings. Which brings us to Hasim Rahman, the kind of opponent who has himself engaged in exciting fights with dramatic endings. Something that Vladimir Klitschko, after his last two fights that haven't been so exciting, could desperately use right about now. Indeed, more about the drama of Rachman's career in just a moment. Quickly, let's take a graphic look at the title picture in the heavyweight division. Max has already described to you the law firm syndrome of Klitschko and Klitschko, clearly the top two. Nikolai Voluev of Russia still has a title belt, which has as much to do with the tangled politics of boxing as with his accomplishments. Sadly, he'll be defending it next week against 46-year-old Evander Holyfield. Max and I have both referred to Alexander Povietkin, who still ranks as a mandatory challenger to Vladimir Klitschko. If Vladimir wins tonight, supposedly he must fight Povietkin sometime before September 13. American heavyweight Chris Ariola has a style and a personality that screams knockout. It's just impossible to imagine a decision in any of his fights. So far, he's been the guy who's gotten the knockouts in every one of them. And David Hay of Great Britain has moved up from cruiserweight, where he he was the champion. He talks a great game, looks terrific, and hopes to fight one of the Klitschkos, preferably Vladimir, later on this year. And now back to the subject of former heavyweight champion Hasim Rahman. It has been an up and down tumultuous ride ever since the glory moment in 2001. Let's take a look at where Rock has been headed to tonight. Hasim Rahman's roller coaster ride began in 1998 when as an undefeated prospect, he took on David Tua. 
Rockman started fast and enjoyed great boxing success until the final moments of round nine. Right right punch at the end of the round. Landed immediately after the bell, and Rockman is seriously hurt, wobbling back to his corner. Unable to regain his senses in the minute between rounds, Rockman was easy prey for Tua in the tenth. Rockman rebounded from the controversial loss with two victories, then faced Oleg Moskayev in Atlantic City in 1999. After another strong start, Rockman's evening took a bizarre turn, to say the least. Oh, right hand puts Rockman on the floor right next to me. Right next to me. Right next to me. In the year 2000, Rockman returned to the same ring and a wild shootout against Corey Sanders. That win led to a title shot in 2001 against champion Lennox Lewis in South Africa. Rachman, a heavy underdog, trailed early in the fight. But in round five, one right hand changed the course of his career. What a story as Haseem Rachman becomes the heavyweight champion of the world in one of the biggest upsets in the history of the division. Fewer than seven months later, the heavyweight championship reign of Haseem Rachman ended as swiftly and suddenly as it had begun. Oh, it's over. Oh. Rockman's climb back up the ladder began in 2002 against former champion Evander Holyfield. After a strong Holyfield start, the fight provided one of boxing's most bizarre sights. There is a huge knot on Rockman's head above his left eye. That is one of the most grotesque things I've ever seen yeah. on a prize fighter. Ultimately, the referee had no choice but to halt the contest, and Rockman found himself with another unusual loss. Four years later, Rockman was again near the top of the heap and facing his old nemesis, Oleg Moskayev. After 11 rounds of back and forth action, the end result mirrored their first fight, and Rockman tumbled again. Never and that's will. it! Won't it's over! Won't. It is over! After four straight victories, Rockman then faced James Tony in July in a rematch of their 2006 draw. A clash of heads opened a cut over Rockman's eye in the third round, and the fight was stopped in the corner. This was originally recorded as a Tony TKO victory, but later changed to a no decision. The incident, yet another bizarre chapter in one of the sport's most unusual careers. Feast or famine, the story of Haseem Rahman Max, has that in itself had something to do with his longevity in the division? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's fun to watch, isn't it? He has had so many epic battles, Haseem Rahman. Part of the reason he's here tonight, yes, it speaks to the thinness of the heavyweight division, although it's not an atypically thin division. In most eras, people complain about the quality of heavyweights. But in this era, it's been dominated, the heavyweights have, by a kind of technical Eastern European style that doesn't always sit well with American fight fans. And in Hasim Rahman, you have more of a throwback to a more offensive-minded, aggressive, kind of good old-fashioned American heavyweight. And Jim, I think that probably always sells. And not only do both Klitschkos have relatively technical styles, but because of the enormous economic support they both receive from German television, it's been difficult to get Vladimir and Vitaly to come and defend in the United States when they're in the title picture. In fact, this marks the eighth trip that we've made to Germany to cover Vladimir Klitschko. Let's take a look at some of what we've seen. In 2001, Klitschko defended his heavyweight title against an erratic American slugger named Derek Jefferson. Big right hand for Vladimir Klitschko. After four more wins and growing recognition as the best heavyweight of the era, he faced Corey Sanders, a heavy-fisted South African journeyman who was contemplating retirement. And Klitschko goes down on a huge left hand. big thing is about to become the last big bust. A 2005 knockout over Eliseo Castillo paved the way to a rematch with Chris Bird in 2006. 
Vladimir had beaten Bird five years before. Klitschko is completely dominating him. And that's the end of the fight as Bird's face is a bloody mask. Since then, more than half of Klitschko's fights have been on German soil. After a dominating performance over Ray Austin in March of 2007, he avenged a prior loss to Lehman Brewster four months later. I'm not gonna let you get to keep hitting with them shots. All right? Okay? That's it, baby. And just five months ago, Klitschko faced one of the tallest opponents of his career, Washington, D.C. native Tony Thompson. at ringside, tail of the tape for Vladimir Klitschko against Asim Rachman. You see the four-year age advantage for Klitschko, a three-and-a-half-inch height advantage, but contradictorily, Rachman has a three-inch arm length advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. Klitschko in perfect shape at 245. Rachman probably a little heavier than he might like at 253-and-a-half. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Vladimir Klitschko Hasim Rachman fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case it comes caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards after four rounds have been completed, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim! Pre-fight sequences in Europe tend to be elaborate and showier than in the United States. This crowd has been treated to what amounted to a one-man play inside the ring, and then a musical performance, and now Hasim Rahman makes the ring walk. Before leaving the United States, he fired the man he trained with in his training camp, Marshall Kaufman, two days ago, Buddy McGirt showed up here in Germany to act as Rachman's chief second in the corner. Lennox, that can't be good for him. Well, I don't think it's going to be good because what happens is, well, when the new trainer comes on, obviously he wants to do new things and give you new information, but what Rock will always do will go back to what he knows, and it's like he doesn't have a trainer because especially uh, the trainer now is going to give him some information. Will he motivate Rock to, to actually perform and come out with some punches that he wants to, wants him to do. Typical of a lot of American heavyweights in the recent era, Max, Rockman is a guy who was plucked from other sports and came into boxing at about age 20. Amazingly, he's gone further with boxing technique than any of the others in that category, like Michael Grant and Jamil McCline and various others. Or most other fighters in any era ever, in the sense that he did indeed become at one time the legitimate one and only heavyweight champion of the world, and he did so with a knockout over one of the all-time greats, our colleague Lennox Lewis. He is not unused to this atmosphere, and I don't think he's intimidated by it. So Rachman enters the ring, hoping to make another big score under unusual circumstances, and having already been written off by some media members who feel as though he's just got too much to carry around with the difficulty of an apparently practiced training camp, the firing of a trainer a week before the fight, the arrival of a new trainer two or three days before the fight, and the problem of facing a longer, taller, more technically sound fighter in Vladimir Klitschko. Klitschko is adored in Germany, although as he learned one night in Hanover with the disastrous knockout loss to Corey Sanders, all that adoration can be turned to ridicule pretty fast. Yeah, he is, Klitschko suffers in certain ways as Lennox did, as Larry Holmes did. Um, not in the sense that he was knocked out. I mean, that's what really turned the crowd against him on that night, the night to which you're referring, Jim. But in the sense that he's a technical fighter who takes what his opponent gives him. So unless he's matched with an opponent who's gonna give him something to really fight back at, he's not always gonna turn in crowd-pleasing performances. Like Lennox Lewis, he is the tallest, biggest star of the division outside, of course, of the seven-footer from Russia, Nikolai Valuev. Like Lennox Lewis, he's trained by Emmanuel Stewart. And Lennox, in several of his recent fights, I had the sense that there was a concern 
that Klitschko might lose his composure during the fight, and Stewart has been extremely important in keeping him focused and confident and able to go out and execute his style. Well, I find about Vladimir, you know, he's definitely a focused individual because when he's in the ring, you know, he does what he practices in the gym. And some, you know, some bad things about him would be the fact that he takes his time a little bit more. Uh, obviously, there's other fighters out there and other people out there that feels that he needs to seize the moment. He needs to in impose his will in the fight and needs to go out there and do what a lot of people want to see, and that's knock his opponent out a lot quicker than he's doing it. So constantly is Vladimir evaluated by media as a process a career in development, and it's amazing to note that he's closing in on 60 professional fights. And he's 32 years old. Uh, his, if you look at his resume of heavyweights in the last 10 years or so, with the exception of Lennox Lewis and Evander Holyfield, he's a com as accomplished, if not more so, than any of them. And it's not out of the question. If he continues to fight as he says he will, that his career could someday reach 75, 80 fights, making him, in a sense, the ultimate throwback to previous heavyweight eras. In a sense, that's correct. And now we're going to go to challenger and champion with two national anthems. First, the national anthem of the United States of America. <laughs> Now, the national anthem of Ukraine. Gentlemen, welcome, meine Damen und Herren. Willkommen in the SAP Arena, Mannheim. Tonight, K2 Promotions is proud to present the main event of the evening. Das ist die Boxweltmeisterschaft im Schwergewicht. Self-runden, 12 rounds of boxing for the heavyweight championship of the world. Sanctioned by the IBF. IBO and WBO, and governed by the DVD. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout will be from Italy, Walter Cavalieri, from the United States, Robert Hoyle, and from Germany, 
Manfred Kuchler. And inside the ring, from the United States, in charge of the action at the bell, referee Tony Weeks. And now, from Mannheim, Deutschland, my Damen and Herren, Dami Gaspadai, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Fighting out of the blue corner, De Blaue Eka, wearing black, standing with his trainer, former world champion Buddy McGirt, and officially weighing 115 kilograms. His professional record, 53 fights, 45 victories, including 36 knockouts, with six defeats and two draws. From Baltimore, Maryland, USA, the challenger, the Harassforderer, im heilige Boxweltmeister, im Schwergewicht, former two-time heavyweight world champion, Hassim the Rock. Del Rota Eka, wearing red with gold, standing with his Hall of Fame trainer, Emmanuel Stewart, official weight, 111 kilograms, professional record, 54 fights, 51 victories, including 45 knockouts with three defeats. Aus Kiev, Ukraine, Zwei Maliga Weltmeister, two-time world champion, the reigning, defending IBF, IBO, WBO heavyweight, Champion of the world, Dr. Steel Hammer, Vladimir Hitchko. Clisco, Rachman, you both received your instructions in your dressing room. Okay, right here is good, anything below is low. Right here is good, anything below is low. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Above all, protect yourselves at all times. Let's go. Rachman has said, I want it, he's got it. Let's see if the former heavyweight champ really does want what the current kingpins got. Klitschko looks even more buffed and muscular than has previously been the case. Hasim Rachman at 253, and despite a questionable training camp, looks pretty good. I would have to say, Lennox, that Vladimir has improved his pre-flight or pre-fight glower. He stared at Rachman with what looked like bad intentions throughout that entire ceremony. It was a definite look of disdain. And, uh, you know, the way how this fight started so far, it turned out good because Rock is bent down low. He's got good position, good balance right now. He's looking to get underneath, looking for some opening, but he throws a good jab. And the good thing that he's doing is blocking the jab. He's not getting hit by any immediate jab so far. Vladimir goes to the left hook and lands that, backing Rachman up. Rachman acknowledged that Klitschko throws maybe the best left hook in the division. He has a very good jab as well. And he's beginning to land it now. Klitschko has threatened records for CompuBox numbers on jabs in many recent fights, most particularly against Lehman Brewster. When he landed the jab with such ease that had the fight gone a long distance, he might have threatened all records for all weight classes. Rockman is leaving himself very wide open right now for that left hook. Every time he throws that jab, he, he puts that right hand somewhere by his waist. And, uh, you know, later in the rounds may give him some difficulty. I mean, look right there, he's throwing the jab, but he's keeping his right hand down. 
Why are heavyweights so reluctant to throw left hooks, Lennox? I don't know. You, I don't know. Had, I think, you I think, had a great one and didn't use it all that much. I think it's a great punch, but, uh, you know, something has to come before it. Obviously, a jab and a right hand, and you always clean up with a left hook. And there, Vladimir led with the left hook. The old Missing. axiom is you don't want to hook with a hooker, because if, if he has a better one than you and it lands first, the fight can end. And I think Rachman knows Vladimir's got a better left hook than him. But you do want to jab with a jabber, because a jab is unlikely to end the fight. But um, you can disrupt your opponent's even superior job with your own. And I think, Jim, that's what Rockman's trying to do here. Yeah. And, but Rockman uh, just, just landed a right hand. Yeah, and Rockman made the same mistake that he made with me when, he, when I threw my right hand. He put out both of his hands at the same time and didn't have no hand back to block a right hand. No, no, hold on. No, stop, 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 stop. Watch the back of the head. Oh, here we go. Vladimir Klitschko said that he was very careful to watch only tapes of the good Rachman, watching the best Rachman performances. But he did acknowledge that he watched the second Rachman Moskaya fight, in which Oleg Moskaya was able to land his left hook with amazing Stop, I regularity. Got you, I got you. And of course, everyone in the division has memorized the left hook right cross combination with which you flattened Rachman in fall of 2001, Lennox. Let me tell you, that was right before Christmas, and I had a great Christmas after that. Catch you pulling out. Close the gap and keep shooting those body shots. Okay? okay. okay. Relax, Come baby. Upstairs. Nice relax. You got it. Nice, so nice relax. relax, baby. Okay, but okay. keep the heat on them. Okay, and, don't stand and here on. we see uh, Vladimir throwing a straight right hand right through the guard of Rockman, and you don't want to be you don't want to take too much of this if you were Rockman. Big round for Vladimir Klitschko in the first. By CompuBox numbers, 23 out of 50, including 17 connected jabs. Rachman only four of 39. So The Rock was not able to get his offense going as Vladimir Klitschko, as has so customarily been the case, dominated the round with his jab. Stop, stop, stop. Rock no needs to go no in no and no hit no. Vladimir to the belly and work his way in. Oh, what, stop, stop, stop. When he's in, on, he's got to hit to the belly and then come to the head. Rockman stop, stop, knows stop, that stop. the way he'll beat Klitschko if he has a shot is to turn it into a contest of wills. The question is, will that Klitschko jab sap Rock of his will stop, as this stop, fight stop. wears on before Rockman has a chance to impose his own? All of Klitschko's opponents tend to complain that he holds, and it certainly Rock. is no, uh, no secret that stop, stop, he doesn't stop, stop. care up, to up, fight up, on the up, inside watch, much watch, if he can avoid it, and he's perfectly willing to put his arms over your shoulders to make that point. Rockman is getting set up for the right hand and needs to move his position. Cannot stand in one position and let Vladimir Klitschko set him up for that right hand because he's like a sitting target stop, 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 if that's stop, the case. No, no, no. Stop, stop, stop. Come on, watch that back in here. Referee Tony Weeks handled Deloy and Pacquiao last week and made the trip over to be here for this big fight as well. Stop, stop. Now, I know in, in, in the corner of Vladimir, Emmanuel Stewart's going to tell him that to throw that uppercut because he's been ducking right every time Vladimir throws a jab, Rockman ducks. So that would be a good setup for a jab, uppercut, left hook. The uppercut is a punch that Vladimir has been reluctant to throw sometimes, though he landed a couple good ones against Tony Thompson in his last outing at age 32. He seems still to be improving technically and can already be described probably as the best technical fighter in the division. If you look at this jab, even when Vladimir Klitschko has been criticized for less than scintillating performances, that jab lands like a power punch. It's blindingly fast, he does not telegraph it, difficult to time, and it lands with a real thud. There again, Rockman standing in one position. 
not throwing any punches. And, you know, this is a position where you need to be first. You need to be first, off your guard, jab, jab, jab. But he's not doing that. He's waiting for Vladimir to jab and set him up. And he's looking to work off of that, but whether he has enough speed and power to do that is the question. In the early part of the round, Rachmaninoff yeah. tastes the right hand there. Got to Vladimir's chest about five times, but wasn't Ill really able to do anything while in there. And now, as they fight at distance again, all the advantages belong stop, to Klitschko. Rockman cannot afford to be hit by that right hand too so many times. So, yep. December 16, it's the premiere of HBO's latest Sports of the 20th Century documentary, Breaking the Huddle, the integration of college football. The next night, Costas Now looks back at 2008, one of the most memorable years in sports history. Relive the best moments of the year with Tiger Woods, Michael Phelps, and others live from New York. What's in that time? Hey, listen, keep your hands a little tight. You got, you got your hands. Every time he comes, he stretch way out here off the balance. You just create a little space and then bing, bing, right back. And here we see two examples of Klitschko setting up the right hand. And let me tell you, Rockman cannot afford to be hit by too many of these in this fight. I mean, they're really showing their effects a little bit. And uh, you don't want to get hit by this, so he needs to keep up that left hand. You want to pop? Happy box numbers through two rounds. Vladimir Klitschko has landed 34 jabs. Asim Rachman has landed just 12 total punches. Nothing of any real significance so far. So two technically pure rounds for Klitschko. And as Lennox Lewis keeps pointing out, the danger is there that a big right hand could end it. Klitschko bending Rachman off with the left, keeping him at bay. Let him up, let him up, let him up. And this time it's Rock who reaches out and clinches Vladimir as they come together. Rock is being flustered by that jab. That jab is bothering him right now. So he's saying he doesn't want to get hit by that jab. He's keeping his hands up and, and allowing Vladimir to throw his right hand and see if he can work off of it. Vladimir just did an interesting thing. Normally he throws all right hands straight down the pipe like that one. But moments ago, he swept the right hand behind Rockman's guard, much like the right hand with which you knocked Rockman out in November 2001. Rockman's laying against the ropes. He's just being an easy target. You can't do that because if you get hit by a right hand, there's nowhere to go. His, his corner is yelling out to him, get off the ropes, and uh, I think that's a good idea. I think he feels Rockman does. He just doesn't have any chance in the middle of the ring. And uh, maybe he can lure Vladimir into a position where he can hit him with something with his back on the ropes. Well, let me tell you, Vladimir is really pacing him with that jab, and there's a lot behind that jab. And a snap is a snapping jab, and it's it's really giving him some problems. You get a headache after a while, right? Well, if I was if I was Rock, I would block that jab. There's no need to get hit by it because all it's doing is damage, and you know a right hand's coming soon. Well, it's a, if it's a strategy at all, it's a desperate one early in the fight from Hasim Rahman. You see, if I was, if I was Vladimir now, I would be throwing a, lo a lot of different array of combinations. I would be punching to the body to mix up the punches because right now, everybody, everybody in this arena knows the right hand's coming. So show something different, throw a left hook, throw an uppercut, and, and get Rockman's eyes going somewhere else instead of looking for that right hand. And although he's looking for the right hand, I don't believe he can stop it. Is Klitschko being too cautious or appropriately cautious? He's being appropriately cautious right now. I mean, like I said, he needs to mix up the punches, throw some body punches, you know, get Rockman to throw, keep his hands down, throw some different type of punches that are in your arsenal, or, uh, and, and give, him, give him something else to think about. Rockman pointed out that at six feet seven inches tall, Vladimir doesn't really like to throw body punches because he has to lower his hands and expose himself to possibly being hit. Here's that left hook by Vladimir, which is very effective. And it was another one-sided round.
very smart. You didn't burn up too much energy. And he's tired. Now he cannot fight to get at the center of the ring now. You see how he's, well, you hit him with the left hook before he was missing. His legs is tired now, okay? Stop doing it. You're not doing it. I want okay? a three piece. You waiting for one shot. Don't wait for one shot with this guy. I'll do that, man. Okay, don't let him get three too piece. relaxed. You let him get too relaxed in the zone. You're going to press him now. Okay. Three piece. Stay behind the double jab, Rock, and keep the heat on him. You got to keep the heat on him, baby. Yeah. Because standing on the outside is not going to work. You know we ain't going to be no decision here. Okay. Three piece. Keep, you're don't look take for the knockout. Now. Don't look for it. Just let yeah. your hands go. Okay. It's a cocoa boy. As he tried to listen to Buddy McGirt's instructions, Hasim Rahman looked very tired, even after only three rounds. Harold, how do you have it so far? Okay, Jim, three to nothing. 30 to 27, Vladimir Klitschko. Jim, I don't know why I scored that third round 10 to 9, because really, it easily could have been a 10 to 8 round Vladimir won it so big. I mean, you just can't do the rope with though against Vladimir Klitschko, he'll kill you. Vladimir landing, piling up points with that left jab, coming across with the real good right hands, just doing a number on Rockman so far. Three to nothing, Klitschko based on clean punching. What we're watching here is the best heavyweight in the world. We're watching so far Vladimir Klitschko against one of the 20 best heavyweights in the world in Rachman. He's still probably one of the 20 best, maybe on a good night, one of the 10 best. And uh, we're seeing a wide distance between Vladimir and that non-upper echelon kind of contender at this point. And, you know, I believe that Rockman's still fighting the fight wrong. He needs to put a little more pressure on him. He needs to try and get in there and hit him with some shots, which is not easy because he's trying to duck under the jab. But when he ducks under the jab, a right hand is coming or a left hook. He doesn't really have anything to worry about with the uppercut right now because Vladimir is not throwing it. But well, you heard the discussion in Rockman's corner as Buddy McGirt accurately observed Rock you seem to be looking for one big shot. And the way to land one big shot is not to look for one big shot, but rather to try to land several. Not only is he looking for a big shot, he's trying to allow Vladimir to tire himself so he, he'll be able to throw one great punch in there. And this is, what, this is what he feels that may happen in the fight, but right now he's getting tagged with a lot of, lot of shots, which is taking a lot of energy out of him. So whether he's going to have a lot of strength left to be able to throw that, that big shot is the question. Lehman Brewster, before his upset win over Vladimir Klitschko, said he was going to have to try to beat him like Rocky Balboa would, by taking everything he had early and staying in his chest as the fight wore on, which is what happened, and Brewster won by knockout. Maybe Rachman has the same idea here. Weather the storm early. Well, as the fight goes on, you know, Rotman's getting a bit more tired. He's still getting hit by those jabs, and whether he can still uh, get away from the right hands, we're going to have to see because Vladimir is becoming very sharp with the right hand and with the jab. And you know when, when he hits you with a lot of jabs, the right hand's going to come. Sometimes you weather the storm, sometimes the storm weathers you. I'd say more often than not. Since the loss to Lehman Brewster in April of 2004, Klitschko has won nine straight fights, looking for a 10th win in a row here, looking to get to 52-3 and three in a career which, for his critics, has been defined entirely by the losses and not by the 51 successes. Such are the pitfalls of being the king of the hill. Okay. Baltimore in the house. Come you gotta on. Light that fuse, you got to start keeping the heat on him. Stop Absolutely. standing on the outside. Don't let the guy get any confidence. You got to make this a dog fight, right? Absolutely. You Absolutely. Everything you, got, you got to make it a dog move fight. Your head Listen, and get in right. his hands here. Okay? You got your hands too far apart. Hands here, and it's coming behind the double jab. Just let your hands go. You got to. <laughs> The left hooks that you were missing before landing, now because his legs and not before he could see good enough. Now he can't see them so good. But that's why you're hitting him with the hooks. Before he was he was in the way, but now you're hitting him with the hooks now. You can step it up a little bit this round. Just get him on out of here. 
Tommy Box numbers on jabs so far in the fight. Klitschko 89 of 172. In other words, he's landing more than half his jabs, 52%. Rachman 11 out of 106. Lennox, I think Buddy McGirt is giving Hasim Rachman good advice in the corner between rounds, but of 53 previous Rachman fights, Buddy trained him for only one. So it's really a shot in the dark as to whether he's going to hear Buddy's good instructions or not. It's true. Buddy should give him some defensive advice as well and tell him to keep up that right hand because I can see a left hook right hand coming from Klitschko. There's the left hook. There's the double left hook. And the straight right hand behind it. Stop, it's all champ. Jim, you mentioned a shot in the dark, and um, Lennox, you mentioned it off the top of the broadcast, and that's really what Rachman is here for, isn't it? To see if he can land that shot in the dark, and it's the, the kind of odds he's facing. It's going to take a shot in the dark to do it. And let's face it, he does have the knockout power. He, he does throw a good wild punch, and uh, I, I don't think he has enough steam or quickness to be able to catch Vladimir right now. Anything can happen. Lightning can strike, but... Uh, whether he has enough energy to do it, whether he's in great enough shape to be able to do it is the, is the question. I say he doesn't have, have enough, uh, he's not in good enough shape to be able to do it. But he wasn't it, expected to, and, and so far the fight is playing out as most expected. A couple of years ago, in his rematch with Klitschko, when Lehman Brewster was subjected to this kind of jab fest, eventually, Buddy McGirt and the others with Brewster decided it was not worth the continued damage, and he kicked it in. Seema Ruck tried to attack Vladimir. Vladimir moved back two steps, and, you know, Ruck missed his punches because he's not quick enough on his feet right now to be able to catch him. Before Buddy stopped that fight, the rematch, game, he told uh, Brewster and really asked him more than told him, I'm going to stop the fight, okay. He gave Brewster a chance to show that he had some at least desperation left in him, and Brewster didn't. He had the fight beaten out of him. And at a certain point, the question is, will Rachman also have the fight beaten out of him? But he had virtually the same conversation with Pauli Malinagi three weeks ago against Ricky Hatton. And Klitschko is getting closer and closer to doing real damage, or so it would appear, to Haseem Rachman. Well, I'd just like to add, stop, stop, I knocked stop, stop, Rachman okay. out in four rounds. And uh, this is the fifth round, and I and Rachman was at his best. This, is, observation, this is Rachman at his worst. Well, Vladimir's a very fast and pretty big puncher, but I don't think there's any ring critic Lennox who thinks that he is as heavy a puncher as you were. You had the thudding power. He has shocking power. Yes. Stop, I got you, I got you. Ah, but we'll never know. We'll never know, will we, Lennox? No, no, I'm on the hand. I think some people can form an opinion after watching this fight. Well, what you're saying is you formed an opinion. Ah. Yes, I have, absolutely. Got a small cut, right eye by a punch. December 23, Real Sports looks back at its most memorable stories of 2008, capped by a roundtable discussion among Bryant Gumbel and all the correspondents. And beginning December 27, HBO Sports will bring you our boxing's best of 2008, five memorable fights from the past year. Up first, Antonio Margarito's thrilling victory over Miguel Cotto in July, and Manny Pacquiao's razor-thin victory over Juan Manuel Marquez in their March 15 rematch. What do you mean? You know, I'm gonna wipe him off. It's a dog fight yeah. with him now, Rock. Okay? You got hands him. No up, decision. head moving, you got him. keep that pressure on him. Absolutely. All right. Don't stand on the outside. Decision. You can't stay on the outside. You took everything he got. Okay? Face. Don't stay on the outside. Let's not take no more shots like that, okay? Okay. One slight assistance to Rachman that's taking place here is that between rounds periods are longer than a minute. They've been averaging about a minute 10, a minute 15, which means, and it doesn't mean a lot, but it means that Rachman's getting an extra 10 or 15 seconds between rounds to recover. And recovery may no longer be an option as he goes down Three, for the first time on a left-right combination. Five, 
Six, seven, eight. Come to me, come to me. You okay? Yeah. All right, I'm giving you a chance. He still so. looks a bit unstable on his feet, and that, that punch did hurt him, whether it was a hard punch or not, but it did kind of give him a little bit of cobwebs. Well, to me, it looks like he's both hurt and exhausted. His legs are going away, whether from the accumulated punishment or the absence of conditioning, or both. I've never seen Rachman have the fight stop, beaten stop, out stop. of him like this. Stop. Uh, even in his losses, he's stop. fought on until stop. the stop. end, and he, he, he's been systematically taken apart, and his, it seems his will to fight on has indeed been broken. He's stop. never been in the fight even for a second. Yeah, well, this is an opportunity for him, the, the, you know. They said to Rachman, here's a fight, here's an opportunity, here's a date. Can you make it? Four, uh, three weeks to train? You know, I would never have taken a fight on three weeks to train. Maybe 16 days. Talking earlier stop, about stop, the difference stop, stop, between stop, stop, you and stop, Vladimir, you. Lennox, it seems to me that the real difference people see in the two of you, both big, both of the manual steward in your corner and technicians with power, is that you were tough. When you were knocked down, you tried your best to go on. You won some very tough fights over some great fighters. Do you think Vladimir is tough enough? We're not, he's not being forced to show evidence of it here. But do you think he's tough enough to one day be recognized as a great fighter? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's tough now. What he needs to be doing right now, I mean, he's throwing the jab, but he's, he's throwing just two different punches. Jab, left hook, right hand. There's no uppercuts, there's no body punches. Now, this is what people want to see. want to see true right back, boxing. They're only seeing left hands and right, right hands and left hooks. But there's uppercuts, there's body punches, there's co different combination punches which he should be throwing. Well, he's known as a cerebral fighter. Are you saying he's not putting the pedal to the metal when he needs to? Well, I believe that he holds back a, a little bit too much where he should really let loose a bit more. Like in this position, he should step up, should take his right foot, step over to the side, and, and start punching from the right side. Switch again and go on the left side of Rotman. Right now he's in front of Rotman. Rotman doesn't have no doesn't have to look anywhere, just look in front of him because that's where Vladimir Klitschko is. Stop, stop, let him up, let him up, let him up, let him up. In round six, after constant sustained punishment for the five preceding rounds, Vladimir Klitschko finally put Hasim Rahman on the deck. Let's take a look at the combination. And it was a combination like, you know, Rahman put his head down, he was off balance, and he, Vladimir okay. hit him with a couple of left hooks, which kept it going that way and he just was off balance and he fell down. It wasn't a terrific hard shot. Do you want to continue to fight? Yeah. Oh, to the end. Okay, look, but if you continue to take punches like that, I'm not going to let it happen. All right? Uh-huh. Hey, so you know you got to let your hands go now. Okay. I'm going to try it off. Okay, listen. You okay, baby? Yeah. Okay? All right, man, listen. Let's, let's, let's go ahead and do what we got to do this round. All right? The ref is not going to let you take no shots like that, hey. Rob. We're good. Okay, you gotta make it a dog good. fight, baby. Mm -hmm. Okay? Do not all right? Get hit with the fucking punch. Stop getting the shots. Lean. Let him lean on his head, all right? Okay? Yeah, he's okay. Stop you him let him get back and he reverse. Right. He's gonna hook right. your hands now, you know that. He's gonna let everything hang out this round. We're good. Yeah, I know. You get the fight on the seat. Get on him quick. was at least a 10-8 round. Vladimir Klitschko was 28 of 68 by Compia Box count in the round, and Hasim Rahman landed one of 16 punches. Harold, how do you have it halfway through? Okay, Jim, 60 to 53, six to nothing, Vladimir Klitschko. Jim, I think he's on his game. I gotta tell you, he's piling up points beautifully with that left jab, mixing in the left hook and throwing a right hand. You gotta give him an extra point in round six for the knockdown. Certainly, it could have got the 10-7 he won it so big. Be as it may, six to nothing, Vladimir Klitschko. Now Rachman wobbles again after another left-right combination. You heard referee Tony Weeks warning Rachman he won't be allowed to continue to take sustained punishment. And here it is. This is over, baby. This is done. And Vladimir Klitschko, criticize what you will. He's 52 and three with 46 knockouts. Not bad. Long tradition in boxing, throughout boxing history, of the dominant heavyweight of the moment taking on a former champion who's no longer at his best, but has name recognition and dismantling him. 
and uh, here is another example of that. One thing for sure, if you're going to fight Vladimir Klitschko, you better be in great shape. You better be in shape that to be able to take a punch and go through the complete rounds all the way to 12. If you're looking at your, you know, you're only in shape to go five rounds, you're not going to win the fight. Let's take another look at the action which prompted referee Tony Weeks to step in and protect Tassim Rahman by stopping the fight. <coughs> well, Rahman's got these punches and he's thrown a lot of, a lot of different punches, but I'm talking Vladimir. And, you know, the ref didn't want to see any more punishment because there was no way that Rotman could have won this fight. And he looked very tired. He went over to talk to him in the corner, and Rotman couldn't even hardly say a word. He was definitely tired. You told us in the first round, Lennox, that uh, Haseem Rahman was wide open for the left hook. And uh, that turned out to be a very prescient call. Throughout the fight, it appeared Vladimir could not miss with the left hook. He couldn't miss with the left hook. He was very sharp. I mean, Rockman gave him an easy target, didn't move his head, and was standing in one place. And, you know, it seemed like a lot of steam has, has come out of Rockman. He doesn't have it like he used to have it. And, uh, he, like I said, he took this fight on a couple weeks' notice. Whether he's in good shape or not, he was in, he was in shape to go through uh, at least three rounds, but not the complete fight. You made a great point when you just said moments ago, if you're going to fight, Vladimir Klitschko, you had better be in sensational shape and ready to go 12 rounds at a fast pace. Does that, for the moment, disqualify American knockout sensation Chris Ariola, who seems to have a problem controlling his weight? Well, I believe so. I mean, Ariola is a great guy, great fighter, but if you fight him in a in a 12-foot ring, you're going to have problems. But in a 20-foot ring where he has to move around and use some boxing and technical skills, it's going to be very difficult for him because he's not that type of fighter. So I don't see that being a good fight for him. I think he needs to get some uh, boxing experience, some technical experience, and then he can really come in because obviously it's a good fight to see, but it's not a good fight to watch. Looking down the road just a little more, let's go to Max Kellerman in the ring. So Adiel is first. Okay, uh, not yet, Jim. <laughs> All right, Max is probably working on getting the interview that he wants there. Uh, so here's a look at future opponents, and I'm sure what Max was likely to tell you here is that Nikolai Valuev looms there. Both Klitschko brothers, Vitali and Vladimir, have said that they would like to fight him. Uh, David Hay is in the audience here, and uh, we'll move while we await post-fight interviews. Uh, David Hay, as uh, Jim was mentioning, is a uh, likely contender. He's athletic, he's fast, he has devastating knockout power, but he's also shown a shaky chin at times, and that was at cruiserweight. He's now really outsized by the big heavyweights. Chris Ariola, Lennox was talking about limited boxing ability. I think Ariola has some underrated boxing ability, a deep amateur background, but has not always been in the best of shape as it's been pointed out. Nikolai Voluev at 7 feet 320 pounds presents some problems for anyone he's in the ring with. He has some good fundamental boxing skills, and while he's not a puncher for his size, given his great size, he does hit with some thudding power. The difference between Voluev in size and Vladimir or Vitaly Klitschko, even as a percentage of their body mass, is far greater than, for instance, the difference in size between Oscar De La Hoya and Manny Pacquiao, a fight you're going to see in a little while, in a few minutes uh, from now on HBO, from last week's pay per view. Uh, so, Jim, there are some interesting matchups out there for Vladimir Klitschko. Unfortunately, the most interesting would be against his brother Vitaly. And both brothers say that could never conceivably take place. Uh, interestingly, moments ago, you were having a conversation with Britain's David Hay, who watched the fight and is now standing five feet away from us. What did Hay have to say about what he saw? Well, basically, he said, if, you know, if, you're gonna, if you can't move out of the way of left hands or right hands, move that head, you know, you don't have a hope in hell. And uh, this was the situation with Rockman. He was getting hit by jabs from the get-go. And then he was getting hit by right hands. And that's a recipe for defeat because that's going to tell you how the rest of the fight's going to go, especially when you get tired in, in the later rounds. You know, you're really susceptible for these type of punches, especially his left hook. We're waiting to throw to Michael Buffer in the ring for the official particulars on the decision. As is always the case, 
for our telecasts here in Germany. The controlling television network is a German television network, RTL. They're really the ones who call the dance in terms of what happens in the ring and when it happens, and we follow their lead rather than to exercise the kind of control that we often have in the United States. So if you get the sense that we are filling and using the, our on-camera mechanics to kill time here, sometimes that's correct. Now let's go to Michael Buffer. Heavyweight champion of the world, Dr. Steel Hammer, Vladimir Klitschko. Final copy box numbers in this one sided wipeout. Vladimir Klitschko landing 178 out of 369. That's a terrific statistic. Anytime uh, a heavy puncher lands 48% of his thrown punches, he's probably been a big winner in the fight. Hasim Rahman simply never in it, landing only 30 out of 207 punches. The Klitschko jab has become his stock in trade, and once again, he was overwhelmingly dominant in this category, landing 119 more jabs than Rahman over the six-plus rounds uh, that they spent in the ring throwing about 100 more, exactly 100 more, than did The Rock, and The Rock's 10% connect percentage with the jab means that he simply wasn't in the jabbing contest. Power shots and Klitschko's accuracy, 37%, not bad. Uh, Hasim Rahman able to get in a few body punches here and there, but never really landed anything significant upstairs where Vladimir Klitschko has been vulnerable in the past. Still to come tonight, our videotaped look back at what happened last Saturday night in the most anticipated fight of the year, the fight between boxing's most identifiable fighter, Oscar De La Hoya, and the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter, Filipino star Manny Pacquiao. And quickly, we look ahead to what's upcoming for the remainder of the year on HBO Sports. December 16, it's the premiere of HBO Sports' latest documentary film, Breaking the Huddle, the Integration of College Football. December 17, catch the live premiere of the next Costas Now for a look back at the biggest sports moments of 2008. Tiger Woods, Michael Phelps, Jimmy Rollins, Michael Strahan, many others on hand to look back at the best moments of the year. December 23, it's the premiere of Real Sports Year End Special, featuring a review and discussion of the most memorable stories the program has covered in this past year. And for four consecutive nights, beginning December 27, tune into Boxing's Best of 2008 and relive some of the biggest moments from this year's jam-packed HBO boxing calendar. We kick off the new year in the ring, January 17, on Boxing After Dark with rising welterweight Andre Berto facing off against Luis Colazzo. One week later, World Championship Boxing returns as Antonio Margarito defends his welterweight title against Shane Mosley. And every Monday, check out HBO.com, where you can find the latest episode of our original digital series, Ring Life, currently featuring three-part profile of Chris Ariola. Ring Life, watch it, download it, carry it, share it. For all that and more, log on to HBO.com. And now we are told that Max Kellerman is standing by in the ring with the winner, Vladimir Klitschko. Max? Congratulations, Vladimir. Uh, you barely got touched. You landed almost everything you threw. Rate your performance. Um, that's what I have to do in the ring. And Hasim Rachman really got punished. And I have to give him respect. He was keep coming and, uh, I mean, every round. And to be honest with you, I was expecting the corner giving up earlier. You looked, in your upper body at least, physically bigger and stronger than you have in the past. Have you done anything different in preparation for this fight? Uh, actually, nothing different. I think that I'm really entering, as uh, Lennox Lewis and many other heavyweights in the history said, that over th when you over 30, the heavyweight is getting better. That's actually what I feel at my age and at my stage. Okay, uh, your brother came back, beat Sam Peter convincingly. You two are now the top two heavyweights in the world. We understand you said many times, obviously, there won't be a Klitschko versus Klitschko fight. That leaves various contenders, including the man you were supposed to face tonight, Alexander Putvyekin. Do you have any thoughts on an upcoming Putvyekin fight? I think that Kasim Rachman is more experienced than Povetkin. Povetkin is a young fighter, and uh, of course, I was expecting Povetkin, that was a wish of Emmanuel and myself, to fight Alexander Povetkin today, tonight. But unfortunately, he couldn't make it because he got injured. And uh, 
Anytime soon, we're going to see Povetin Klitschko in 09. David Hay has also been calling you out. Uh, Chris Ariola is on his way up. You have some interesting contenders uh, in front of you. What is your preference? Uh, I haven't heard heavy, uh, <laughs> David Hay tonight because he's been loud. And where is he? So anyway, I think that exciting time in the heavyweight is coming. We got Alexander Povetkin, we got David Hay, we got Chris Ariola, we got uh, somebody else probably. So now it's, getting, it's going to be very excited. Vladimir, before I let you go, you and Vitaly talked as you grew up about one day monopolizing everything in the heavyweight division. You two are in fact together the heavyweight champion of the world. How do you feel about that right now? Do you wish that you could be heavyweight champ all by yourself one day? <laughs> you know, to be honest with you, I do share with my brother jointly the heavyweight division. And I think it's even more exciting to do it together with my brother than to do it alone. Thank you, champ. My pleasure. Thank you. Jim. Maybe, uh, but there are still millions out there who yearn for a single identifiable heavyweight champion. And if Vladimir Klitschko is your guy, it was a successful year. Knockout victories over Tony Thompson and Hasim Rahman to get the record to 53 or, two, or 52, I should say, and three with 46 knockouts.